Hey y'all, welcome to my quail shack. All right, I think we're going there. All right, hey everybody, uh, can you guys hear me? Do I have a five by five there? Um, can everyone see in here? Let's see, there we go. Good evening, good evening. So it looks like we got CDB in here. Hey, thanks for showing up. And Vern is here over at Bay, uh, Bay's Place. We got Willie from Carolina Kind. Um, Archie, uh, Arizona Homestead's here. It looks like awesome. Hey, RG, good to see you. 555, five, five. awesome. Well, I'm here in the 505, so give me a 505. <laughs> Things didn't hear me good. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, Welcome to my chat. So, um, for anyone who doesn't know me, uh, welcome to my Quail Shack. My name is Matt, and uh, this is Quail Shack Chat with Matt here at the Grafted Branch Urban Homestead. Where, uh, on our urban homestead here in the Southwest Desert, we are uh, learning skills and pushing things to be more self-sufficient, healthier, and kind of have a better way to live. So, we're learning a lot of things here on a micro scale that we do hope to upscale and plan. Uh, to do a lot more with that later and so everyone's just saying good uh hello and good to see everyone hey uh not so remote alaska hey good to see you i hope you're staying warm i know we've been uh having pretty good temperatures here in new mexico the rest of the country's been crazy i don't know what it's been like up, up there i'm assuming very cold though so welcome to my quail shack i'm going to get a few things started here um and then i'll explain what i'm talking about but I've been kind of under the weather today, so I'm going to go ahead and get about uh, the stream tonight. But I want to chat, say hello, do a little catching up. I know you saw probably on my little opening cameras there, my one little um, Celadon quail that's trucking along. He's a little guy. He's starting to feather out, but he was also the smallest egg. And so he's, he's a pretty tiny little quail. So they're doing good. I have my other quail over here are doing great so these ones on the top four here are the four i hatched out from my second generation quail and they are looking beautiful and they are doing good in the cold that hasn't affected them so they're moving out here they are doing uh, just really good there's only four of them but they're all you know, so that's nice um anyone that may have seen one of my short little video i released earlier this week i did get my final um Wynola Ranch quail cage. This is going to be my layer cage back here. There's nothing in that right now as I'm going to be getting going with my breeding program and then my uh, layers uh, a little bit more full swing a little later here. Um, however, that's not really what this stream is about. Um, so let's see here. So this stream is uh, how to make bulk seed starter, a natural bulk seed starter mix. Um, on the cheats that you can make a lot of. Now, seed starter mix isn't extremely expensive. Um, when I was looking at the store, you're gonna pay anything from really cheap stuff, six, seven bucks, up to you know about ten bucks for a small little bag of it. Um, and of course, when I say cheap in my video nowadays, nothing's cheap. Prices have gone up so much on everything, so I'll address that a little bit. But um, if you're only planning on doing a couple plants, you know, a few, just three or four tomato plants or something like that. A couple indoor plants, this is also a good indoor potting uh, mix, then buying a small bag uh, might be something for you. However, what I'm talking about is if we plan on doing a lot of seed starts for our garden, um, and of course I want to learn how to make my own seed starter mix uh, in bulk so that when we upscale that uh, to something like 500 seed starts, then um, we'll have a good mixture. So I'm going to get into a little bit of what I use and why. One of the first things I'm going to do though is I'm going to I have my little gas uh, powered propane, little propane stove out here. And this little stove is great. These are good for camping. Um, they're good for off-grid situations or, you know, like I'm using it for here. Um, 
So it just runs on these little one pound propane tanks. Um, you know, good for emergency situations. They're very inexpensive. You can pick them up even at Walmart, most anywhere. I think this one costs me about 30 bucks. Um, this one can do butane or propane. Um, great to have if you need to boil water, cook some food, um, uh, either, you know, like I said, camping or emergency or like I'm using now. I'm going to go ahead and get this going. I have a pot on here with water in it. Hopefully everyone can still see me. It looks like my computer's lagging a little bit. But anyway, um, I have a pot just with water. And I'm going to get this boiling and we'll get to what we're going to use that for in a minute. But I do need to get that started. All right. <laughs> Something I do want to mention. If you are using these indoors, you always want to use the carbon monoxide detector. Have good ventilation. Um, because anything you're using with a flame indoors, uh, certainly you want to be safe. Now, the quail shack out here isn't very well insulated. Actually, that's why this black plastic is up, uh, is because it's just single wall right now. Um, there's not really any insulation in it. So in order to cut any real draft that may be coming through there in the winter here, there's some black plastic there. So we're going to get this going. We're going to get that boiling up. I'm going to check out the comments for a quick minute and then we will hop into what we're going to put in this deep starter mix so let's see oh not so remote alaska there said uh, we are having the heat wave at 22 degrees above right now wow <laughs> that's our about our cold point right now so yikes michigan has been quite warm all right that's nice i know michigan can get i've known a couple people from michigan and uh, i knew one guy lived right off the lake he was talking about how the ice and the storm really blows in um and whatnot from there but i'm glad it's kind of warm music interferes a bit with my voice thank you cdb i appreciate that i forgot to turn that off let me do that okay let's see how do i do this Thank you, CDB. I hope that wasn't too distracting for everyone there. 29 degrees over at, we're at Verna. Uh, let's see. Let me catch up. My chat's going a little bit. There's a few people in here. Good to see everyone. And so love the butane burners. Yeah, 50 degrees in Florida. Hey, over there. Hey, Ultimate SNS. You guys haven't checked out Ultimate SNS. Uh, he is a channel to check out. That guy is full of so much good information. Uh, Stuff you really need to uh, get as well. Very wise man. So uh, check out his channel. And he's saying, hey, good to see you. Yeah. So uh, tonight I am going to talk about making a seed starter in bulk. And this is a little bit cheaper if you're going to do a lot of it. So your seed starters are going to be a basic uh, mix of usually peat moss. Sometimes they use a cocoa fiber or something like that. Now this here, if you can see, is a big bag of peat moss I got. Uh, at the store. Now, this used to run me about 10 bucks, I think 11, 10, 11 bucks last year. Um, it was $18.99 right now. So everything is expensive. So when I say cheap, it's going to be cheaper. But this is three cubic feet of compressed um, peat moss. And so uh, this will make a lot of seed starter uh, for you. So that's the first thing I'm going to use is peat moss. Another thing I'm going to put in here is paralyte. Now, perlite is really good for keeping the soil from condensing down. Your seed starter mix, you don't want it to condense down. This also helps to aerate the soil for the roots to promote their growth and then helps for drainage so they're not going to be rotting or things in there. Um, perlite is half of the mixture I like to use. Now, I also use vermiculite. I don't have that here. I actually went to a bunch of stores, and for whatever reason, um, I can't find vermiculite anywhere right now where I'm at. So that is something I am going to order. So for this mixture, I'm going to have to say uh, when I, and I will address it each time, but when I use Perlite, um, what you're really going to want to use, and I'm going to order some and get it in, but is a half Perlite, half Vermiculite. The difference really is the Vermiculite holds moisture, so that's going to help retain it, and that's important for those little seeds um, as well as aerate it. It does give some minerals and things to your soil as well. So we'll use a little bit of perlite. Now this bag, I normally get a bigger bag um, and, the, and the real big bag of vermiculite. Uh, I can't find those for the life of me. So um, part of making my own seed mixture, seed starter mixture, is 
part of kind of what I'm doing with everything here. And that is really trying to move towards doing things on my own. So even finding a better seed starter mixture than, than what I'm doing here is the goal. One that I can produce more so myself and not rely on having to find the vermiculite or perlite, but it's something you could stock up on. So um, this bag cost me, I think about six bucks. And this is gonna do a lot. It's gonna do far more than I need. I'll end up using a lot of this just in the garden as well. But another thing I'm gonna use, and this is particular to if you're using a peat moss seed starter. Um, if you're using a cocoa fiber, you don't need it quite as much, but the peat moss can be slightly acidic. So adding a little bit of, and I'll show measurements here, but a little bit of garden lime, all natural garden lime to your soil um, is going to add some calcium to it. It's also going to help with that pH balance in the soil a little bit for those new shoots so we're not burning anything. Speaking of not burning, you want to use a good all natural um, fertilizer. And I just use a very little bit of this. The seeds themselves have all the fertilizer they need. And I'll get to comments. I know I'm not doing so much right now, but in a moment. Um, the uh, seed, I'm sorry, the seed has all the fertilizer really it needs in that little seed to get it to pop up and germinate, start going. And when it starts putting its roots down in the soil, though, those are going to be looking for water and for nutrients. And you need a little bit in there for them to get going. So this is just going to be a very small amount. These bags will last for a lot of this seed start mixture. But what I got here is Dr. Earth Pure Gold Organic Natural, um, just all purpose fertilizer. You can get the bigger bag. This one uh, here cost me, I think, about six bucks as well. This is just a, a easy, good, low, steady mixture. It's a two, two, two. You don't want anything really high in for different fertilizers because you can burn those little starts and it doesn't really need quite as much right now. So we got that. Paralyte and vermiculite. And then we got the line. And I got a couple tools here. So the water is still boiling. That'll give me a chance to get the chat. But I'm also going to talk about what the water is for. And this is an important part of making your seed start mixture, too. Um, when I make this mixture, you can make it dry, leave it mixed in dry like that, throw a lid on in either you know a bin like I'm using here or a bigger bin, label that seed start mixture and put that away. And that will store for a while and be a good mixture for you. When it comes time to use it, you're going to want to hydrate it. So uh, we're going to want to put a lot of water into it. Now, this can take a lot of water. So if you were doing a large amount, I would have several pots and pans on uh, my stove going to do it. Um, part of this, I also wanted to use my gas burner in uh, protest because uh, my indoor burners are electric. And um, I'm now looking at wanting to really get a gas stove. Uh, before I can no longer do that. So with that said, my gas burner. Um, so I'm heating up the water. We're going to go ahead and rehydrate it with the water. We're using boiling water, though, because a lot of seed start mixes, a lot of them, the better ones are sterilized. The not so good ones are not sterilized. If you're using peat moss or a peat moss based one, particularly like this here, um, a lot of times they can have gnat eggs in them or little gnats. And when you use uh, for indoor potted plants, You'll see those little gnats flying around. Uh, they come from the soil. So you really want to sterilize that. So what I'm going to do is boil down, catch a moth, cut them off. I'm going to boil this water real good, real hot, and we're going to pour that in there to hydrate it, mix it, and that's going to kill any of those little eggs and sterilize our mix for us. So we're not going to have that problem. So before I get to mixing up the mixture and the amount and pouring the water on, I'm going to let that boil for a little bit more. Check out comments here for a moment. Oh, yep, the music's distracting. Okay, well, um, I did cut that. Um, hopefully that helps. Uh, and then let's see. We're saying hi. RG's saying, and uh, RG Arizona Homestead, if you haven't checked out his too, he does a lot of videos uh, from, I guess it's his trail cam, but of, of his little pond there, a lot of animal wildlife, absolutely beautiful scenery lately. Check out some of his last ones he's put up because of their snowfalls there. Um, just some of the most gorgeous scenery, uh, absolutely beautiful, um, definitely worth checking out. <laughs> Popping and boiling a little bit, uh, but he is saying it's beach weather there, 24 so far, but the night is young. For, I think it's about 30 right here in the high desert in New Mexico right now. It's been about 
40 in the day, about 20 at night. And I probably saw some steam coming out or uh, coming out of my breath. TDB's reminding everyone to hit that like button. Yeah, that's, that's something I don't do enough. And I know when you're just watching these, it's easy to click through, but it's something that does really help out with YouTube. Uh, getting me going is hit that like button if you have not. And subscribe if you have not. So um, I've been gaining a lot of subscribers lately. That's, that's really exciting. Um, uh, as always, I'm hoping to reach more people in my subtle ways and uh, share some things and teach some. So this is starting to go. I'm going to go ahead and get into my mixture here. So I'm going to adjust the camera a bit. And we'll get into this. Now this mixture, I'm going to tell you how to do it by parts, and I'll explain what I mean there. But this, that way you can scale it to however you want. So this is a good seed starting mixture. It's also a really good indoor potted plant mixture or different things like that. Let me see. Let that camera catch up. Let see what I'm doing here. And I got my bucket. I'm just going to do a really small batch tonight uh, to show everyone. And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to do it in parts. And so you just use any container you want to use. To do your measurements. If I was doing a lot, really uh, large, large batches. Now, what I'm doing tonight should be able to fill one of those large uh, trays. But um, anyway, uh, it doesn't matter what container you use. If I was doing a large one, I can do one part at this bucket. But I'm going to do one part at this for now. And you're going to do three parts of the peat moss to one part of the half perlite, half vermiculite. I'm going to do one tablespoon of all-purpose uh, low, kind of low natural fertilizer there, and one tablespoon of garden lime. Now, that's the part mixture. I'm going to do two of those. So, I'm going to essentially do six of these of peat moss, two of these of perlite, normally half perlite, half vermiculite. And then I'm going to do two, ta two tablespoons of garden lime and two of the... Uh, Fertilizer there, and you're going to see just how much this is going to make. City Breeze saying, mm -hmm, homemade bread. Did someone just make bread? Verna, I am making some bread right now using powdered eggs for, uh, as my new quail are not laying for another week. Verna, let me know. So Verna's got a harvest right, uh, dehydrator, absolutely awesome, or freeze dryer, I'm sorry, absolutely awesome tool. And she has been freeze drying her eggs, I do believe. Uh, which is fantastic. So I'm really curious as to how that goes. <coughs> Excuse me. So I've done some experiments with dehydrating eggs and putting those on the shelf. And I have some that are a year old now that I've used that work really well that way. RG Arizona. Right now I have the Arizona wild onions in the garden. It's new to you and should be fun. That is awesome. So I do, I have some, uh, I'm going to turn this off to boiling, but I have some onions in the ground right now. I have a lot of garlic in the ground overwintering. Uh, so the red winter wheat is overwintering. So those are going. Um, even though it's cold now, uh, seed start is going to be in the next few weeks here. There's still a few things now. I'm in zone 7B. So there is a few things I can grow right now. I start right now indoors that need a little more time and whatnot. One of those would be bunching onions. So I'm going to start those. And then within the next few weeks here, uh, we'll be starting the cucumbers, tomatoes, and a lot of those. And so I assume a lot of people are going to be doing seed starts now. So we're going to get to this next year. <laughs> All right. And this provides a lot. So that's why I say it's bulk on the cheap, because you need to do, you know, 500, 1,000 seed starts. Uh, all of this together, the 20, you know, maybe 30, even 40 bucks for being able to do 1,000 seed starts or whatever. Is going to be definitely well worth it. So let me get some of this. And you know what? I think I'm actually just going to stick with one single part. So three of these and then one of the other. I don't think I'm going to do the double right now because this is going to make a lot. And I do want to buy that vermiculite. Um, unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to order it. So uh, I do want to get that without having it. You can do it without it, just the perlite. Um, that with adding this nutrient uh, fertilizer and the garden line, it will be okay. Um, you're just going to want to watch the moisture a little bit more. That thing that vermiculite I'm really looking for, it adds moisture to the soil <clears throat> and retains it. And so those seed starts, you really don't want them to dry out. 
So without having it in here, I just got to pay a little bit more attention to the soil. So, get the peat moss, and I'm going to get my three my three parts here. Uh, I'm doing this outside in the quail shack. I don't want to make my wife mad. <laughs> Let's see. And Vernon saying, making them powdered, they can last up to 30 years. Just mix the eggs like you're going to make scrambled eggs and fill trays. Um, of the food dryer. Yep, that's awesome. Then. Okay, so I got three, three of my container things there of the heat moss. I'm going to want to do one part of the half paralyte, half vermiculite mixture. And I know you can't see my face right now. I'll adjust that camera better in a minute. So the vermiculite is going to kind of be those like little balls uh, you see in the mixture. This is the little white kind of styrofoam looking things you see in seed start mixture. So again, this is going to help to keep the soil from compacting, going to aerate it and allow the roots to really take off. So I'm going to do one part of that to my three parts of seed moss. And then I'm going to want to take my fertilizer here, my all natural fertilizer. That vermiculite dust all over me. <laughs> Archie, how has your solar system been working out? Hey, it's been working out great, Archie. So I, uh, I'll actually talk about that in a minute after I do this. So this is my fertilizer, and this is just 222, a real low fertilizer, and you don't need a lot at all. So for three, three parts um, peat moss, one part half perlite, half vermiculite. And one, just one tablespoon of fertilizer. And RG actually helps me with my solar system. So he's asking about that. He has some cool videos on that too. So we'll get into that. So, Bernard said, instead of store bought fertilizer, you could add rabbit poop. It's cold, so it would not harm your plant. Yep, yeah, that's what I was talking about, Bernard. So actually, I do want to get away from all store bought things. Um, as much as possible. I know I can't completely, but like fertilizers and things like that. So I actually wanted to talk about uh, something else too. I got two things, but try not to forget. And so this is that garden line. So this is going to help uh, even out the pH with the heat moss. This is going to add some calcium and things into that soil as well. So I got my mixture. I got an old spoon. If you ever visit uh, New Mexico, go eat at Dion's Pizza. Absolutely fantastic place. <laughs> this is one of their spoons, and we use them for everything from the salad. Let's mix that up real good. And then what I'm going to do is I can tell you right now I don't have enough water to completely rehydrate this. It does take a lot, and you're using the boiling water to sterilize. So I'm going to dump that. I might have enough, but let's see. I'm going to dump. I'm just going to dump that all in there. And that's going to burn out, kill any little eggs and gnats because you are probably have your seed starts inside more than likely. You uh, don't want the little gnats in, you know, in, indoors, obviously. So we're going to sterilize this and we'll let it cool. And Vernon's saying to do rabbit poop. So I do really want to get a more natural way of doing this, uh, most certainly. So this is what I'm going to do this year, and then I'm going to experiment. And so part of doing things a little more naturally with my quail and chicken feed. I actually, uh, well, this is hydrating. You can see that there. I'm going to adjust the camera. Talk. So a lot of people have been having problems with their chickens or quail not laying eggs. And that is because of a, a couple mineral or vitamin deficiencies, I believe, in the chicken feed, particularly feed from tractor supply, um, which I am getting away from. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But, uh, and, and so their chickens aren't laying because they're getting deficient in that. Berna gave some great advice and, and research she did, and that was to give them rice and uh, lentils. And uh, that is going to provide those nutrients to help them keep laying. Now, something we do here, we eat a ton of rice and beans and things like that anyways. And one of my chickens' jobs is to eat leftover scraps, especially in the winter when the compost isn't really going. And so they eat a lot of that anyways. And so I'm thinking maybe that's why we haven't seen any of those problems. However, last month as well, we switched over from going to the big box store, tractor supply, to a local feed store that I found. 
And so I've been um, messing around with that feed and their mixtures. So I think they're getting what they need. But that is something to look into there. Lentil. Did I not say lentil? Oh, yes. Okay. So, yeah. So uh, that is something you can use if you're experiencing those problems. Um, let's see. So that is our soil. And you are going to want to let it cool. Oh, my spoon's still in there. And this can be used for potted plants or seed starters, and that's going to have everything they need in there. So I'm going to do a video here in a few days, or probably a week or two, actually, on getting my seed starts going indoors. Um, we want to do the seed starts indoors a lot better this year. We had a lot of problems with them being lanky and having the lights too far away and some other issues last year. So this year we'll do a lot more. Um, right now I'm building the racks, the lighting, we're going to get seed mats and do all of that. So that will be in some streams upcoming here. Um, another thing we want to do is try growing year-round the lettuce and some other vegetables indoors, like try the potatoes indoors again and some things like that. So we have some constant indoor plants going um, besides just the garden. I, I really think it's good to diversify in as many ways as possible. Yes, you know, so we got that long-term freeze-dried food. We have the long-term back pantry of rice, beans, uh, spices, and different things like that. We have the big pantry that we shop from, kind of like a grocery store. We have our main pantry. We have the garden, the bird, uh, dehydrated things, ourselves, things we canned ourselves, and vacuum sealed ourselves. Um, so as well as we want indoor garden as well. So we're we'll going to be doing that with lettuce, potatoes, some other things, and microgreens. Um, one thing we have been doing indoors, though, is a lot of fodder for the birds. And so that's really just micro greens, but for the birds um, to give them some of that. So let's see here. RG is saying, uh, Faith Place, hope you're doing, uh, hope. Hey, I hope you are doing well this weekend. And she's just replying, yep, yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm crazy as ever, of course. So, okay, just talking to each other. Good stuff. You guys rock. I'm going to show the solar system a little bit. Um, I, I, of course, in my live streams, am always open to any questions. I may or may not be able to answer them. I like to ask a lot of questions as well. As you know, if you've been here, um, get a lot of good advice from this community. So feel free to ask anything. I'll show anything that anyone wants to see. If you ever have videos you want to see, I'll most certainly try and get those done. Um, I do know I have a request quite a bit to do my mealworm video. Um, but it's just not quite warm enough for that. So we will get to that. But let me show around in here. I hooked up my solar system in, in the quail shack. That's what's running the lights and all my power in here. Um, so in New Mexico, well, I know coming up, you can get fined for going completely off grid. That's also very expensive. I am in a urban homestead, so that's not very feasible for me. So my solution is I'm going to sl slowly take my house to making the on-grid power my backup power and having uh, different off-grid components. And so I decided we don't have any power out here in the backyard um, where we do the urban home study. And so instead of running power out here or trying to do anything like that, I just decided to start with my off-grid learning and whatnot out here. So I started on the chicken coop and then I've moved to the quail shack. So this is, I guess, kind of version two. Right now it's only on a 100 watt solar panel. I have two more 100 watt solar panels that will be installed across the front, um, just waiting for time to do that. And so RG suggested that. Now I am using this charge controller. Um, it's done well, I've had no problems with it. I do wanna get a better one. So that's an upgrade that will be coming. But basically I have a 75 amp hour, 100 watt um, sealed lead acid battery. They don't last as long as lithium or those, but it is outside in the quill shack. That's not very insulated right now. So uh, temperature wise, I'm hoping that that's my thought anyways. So it runs up here into a fuse and then into the charge controller. I really enjoy using these little timers. And so these turn on all kinds of different things. Um, right now you can see daytime running. So that's these lights. I then have outside lights. Uh, right now the outside red is on. The outside white cut off. I have a red light on my quails and chickens inside and outside, and that gives them 30 minutes of red light before and after the main lights go on and off, uh, just to allow them to get situated so they don't go right from light to dark. Um, anyways, and then these control the chicken coop actuator, chicken coop lights inside and outside, and those different things. It has its own little fuse 
panel there, relay for the uh, chicken door, and all that is now controlled in here. And I put this on hinges so I can get to the back of it. Oop, you see the red lights are clicking on. And so my timing's off, I think, by a few minutes. We may actually, I'm going to manually turn these off because I think we're going to lose the main lights in a minute. So let me turn these red ones off. There we go. Oh, that was the outside red. I turned the wrong one off. We'll turn this overhead one off. And I'm hooking in the process of putting switches on them all as well. Uh, that's coming on. So I'm going to turn this on. I'll take it off auto. <laughs> And just turn it on. There we go. So this is my little solar system. I have a little blink security camera out here. Um, there's other lights I can turn on and off. I do want now for the quail in order to keep them laying. They're on 14 hours of light. The chickens are on 12. They need just enough light to read by basically. Um, one thing I do notice though with these winola cages in particular is they sit pretty low to the ground. So the bottom cages don't get a whole lot of light even when the windows open. Um, so I'm going to run a light bar along that back wall as well that will shine in the back of the cages. Um, so the solar system controls all of that. It is going to control a small water pump eventually here that uh, goes to the outdoor rain catchment that's just behind that wall. So I can have a small sink in here with some water. Um, solar system works great though, RG. You really helped me out with that. I, uh, it does everything I need. I am going to also put an inverter in here. So when I'm plugging in um, my laptop right now, I just use my little Blue Yeti solar generator, which is great. Um, but yep. And then behind here, there's another door um, all about redundancy and all these things. And so one door, two door. If I get locked in or something happens, I can get out into that back area. So this solar system, it controls a lot. And I'm in an urban homestead, so you'll hear all these police things going by me probably now. But let me hop back and chat a little bit. What's going on. So I'm doing that. Uh, that's the outside solar system. I'm going to be working on, as money allows, a lithium ion, a life po 4 solar system that I have a lot of components for already. I'm just slowly building those. As with everything I do on the urban homestead, as a, as a aspiring homesteader, I'm learning skills here. I'm a, of the preparedness mind for sure. Um, so something actually, I don't know if anyone's ever watched American Homestead, but something Zach over there says a lot that I agree with is uh, if you follow prepping to its logical conclusion, you're going to end up a homesteader. And so basically, that's kind of how I look at it is I started off uh, my very first video on YouTube, kind of funny, but, um, but I don't even know if it was, it might have been on my other channel, I'm not sure, but um, was my EDC bag, and I made that video in, I think, 2014, um, and it was on my EDC bag, and so I was thinking about that today, and I actually had all my bags lined up. I had my EDC, my car bag, my my bug out bag, get home bag, my um, not coming home bag, you know, all my different ones, and I had them lined up, and I was looking at them, and I was thinking, oh, I should do a video on these, these bags sometime, and what I put in them, since my very first video was on that, but um, I decided not to do that. I decided to go with the seed starter mix uh, for this one today. And then I went on a big tangent there. I don't even know. I kind of got lost. <laughs> That's normal. Let's see. Not a whole, whole lot going on with the garden and the animals right now. It's just kind of keeping them going. I have, uh, I keep going back and forth as to whether I'm going to start incubating more quail eggs and buy some now, or if I'm going to wait a month or two and get that going when it starts to warm up a little bit. This year, I'm also going to be culling some of my older chickens and uh, starting new, chick new chicks. So here on the Urban Homestead, I don't have a chicken rooster. So I can't be uh, as self-sufficient as I want there. Um, I can have one, but I really don't want to draw attention. And I have a lot of neighbors, excuse me, as well as corporate neighbors. Um, and I really just don't want to draw attention to what I got going on here. So um, good news is, is my wife every day is sending me ads she finds of, of different land around. And, uh, you know, we keep finding ones with five, ten acres. 
And so uh, definitely we will get there uh, as the Lord provides. So let's see. It looks great, man. Keep up the great work and keep build bigger. Yes, build bigger. I'm, I'm always about building and growing. And then Verna's saying, Matt, you had three koi born, koi born yesterday, Wednesday. I'm sorry. Uh, this computer writing is really small in this period. And any day now, the other sow will begin getting birth. That's really cool, Verna. So Verna's got a koi that she's as, as one of her. Um, well, she's got an urban homestead too, really. <laughs> Burton is in a small area, but she uh, is breeding her own meat and in the koi and the quail and doing that. And so that is really cool. I know she has some plants going. She's talked about outdoors and, and utilizes all the space she has. So Burton is really an urban homesteader too, in a little bit there. And, and TDB is saying, yep. Uh, Bay Baby guinea pig are the cutest. They are cute. In an apartment, yeah. I think that came up in Verna's chat this morning, actually, was someone was saying uh, about cuteness. Or, oh, you were saying about your about Lucy, your dog, that she's cute, too. And someone said, well, they eat the cute quail, too. A lot of the animals are, are cute. Sometimes I'm like, man, I really don't want to send this one to freezer camp. But that is their purpose. We still got a, a couple people in here. Let's see. I'm not sure how long I've been on. Uh, a little over half an hour. I was shooting for about half an hour. Uh, we'll stay on for a few more minutes. Here we'll go about 45 minutes tonight, I think. I'm just stirring this up. This was actually the perfect amount of water for this seed mix. And so I'm going to be starting bunching onions because those are something good. I get going. Um, another thing was always looking for different ways to do things without electricity or, uh, you know, different means like that. Well, I've, I've constantly been on my mind uh, how to do the seed starts without grow lights and without electricity and those things. And so uh, I was pondering it. I have a couple ideas. You could get your plants started indoors because they don't need a lot of light um, until they sprout, germinate. And then maybe put them outside in, under some row covers or in a hoop house. You got a greenhouse. Um, they're not going to be getting as much light without the supplemental, but that may work. I don't know if anyone has any. Uh, CDB's laughing about freezer camp. Yep. I don't know if anyone has any good ideas on seed uh, starting without those things. And so, one of my favorite TV shows we haven't watched in a little while, but we were watching. For a while, there is Little House on the Prairie, and I, I really liked that uh, show. And so I think, you know, how did people do it back then? And did they just not do seed starts? They just grew what would grow in their area, which I think is more likely. You know, if you have 100 days of growing season, you grow the things that do that. And, of course, you're not going to maximize your yield, but um, maybe. Now, here definitely this year, it is our goal to really maximize our yield. We're cutting down on some of the variety of plants we're growing or how many different ones we're growing. Um, and we're really zeroing in on what we eat, what we can really produce um, to can and to store and put away. So this year is about maximizing for sure and seed, seed, uh, seed saving. Mr. Landfill, good to see you. I don't know if I said hi. I might have, but always good to see you, Mr. Landfill. Made the rounds. Uh, of the Goodwill stores added lots of medical supplies to your prep. Yeah, Goodwill is a good uh, place to find a lot of things for sure. Medical supplies are awesome. I'm always trying to stock up on those. I've kind of been on lately here. I've been stocking up clothes. So I've been trying to find some extra good pair of pants, uh, underwear, socks, shirt, kind of put those away because I know uh, those I can use later. And so I'm not having to look for those. So I've been stocking up on some of those. Goodwill is a great place to get those. Um, speaking of my solar system, I had gotten a good tip a while ago, and I've had my eye peeled. I haven't come across it, but they said at Goodwill, sometimes you can find batteries that go in golf carts or wheelchairs or things for pretty cheap. Um, Goodwill is a great place to find stuff. I don't go there near enough. I do like on my lunches sometimes to go by the Goodwill. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I don't give my stuff to the Goodwill anymore just because I don't, as I'm getting older, I'm really seeing the value of where I put my dollar as meaning something. Um, I know it 
is a drop in the bucket, but it means something to me. And with how important money is to everyone and how much of an idol that can become in people's lives, I think it's important where I put my money. And so I'm looking at that more so nowadays. And so there's a few things I don't agree with. But Goodwill, I do still shop there and buy things there. I don't necessarily donate as much anymore. Um, I There's some other ones like Big Brother, Big Sister I like to donate to. But, um, and, you know, you do what you can. Um, just same as I, I really don't like Tractor Supply. I've been trying to move my sales to of food and things to these local places. I really want to grow and make my own food and do chicken tractors when I get land and move away as much as possible. Um, but one of the things I haven't been able to get just, I don't know, is the um, pine shavings. And so I use those a lot. So that is one thing that I'm going to have to go buy a bunch of that from tractor and until I can get it from the local feed store. Um, I had two of them say they should get it in soon. So I'm, I might just get some. Um, from Tractor, even though I don't really like going there, and uh, until I can get transitioned over. So you do what you got to do. Um, but you, I, I definitely think making an effort uh, means something. But a little bit of a rant there. <laughs> but Goodwill's good. I, I, I love going to there, finding things there. I'm not ranting on Goodwill. Please don't think that. Matt, are you going to plant sorghum? I did sorghum last year, and I didn't get a lot. Um, I kind of failed in that a little bit. I do want to do it again because sorghum is a good ancient grain. Uh, stores well. You can make sugars and things out of it. Um, really good for in the chicken feed and things. So I, I, I'm considering it, thinking about growing it. The spot I have the sorghum in right now has red winter wheat in it, and that's overwintering. Um, I'm really hoping to get some wheat, more so I'm learning on how, how to grow it. Um, so once that harvest is in late March or so, I'm going to plant corn there. And uh, I think I'm going to do uh, the bed in two sections. I'm going to do two weeks in half of it, and then two weeks later do the other half in corn. Let that grow. Harvest, harvest. Depending on timing, I'm considering then putting sorghum in there, trying to get a, a small crop out of that at the end of the year if I can. New Mexico, we're 7D grow zone. Um, we do have kind of, it can be a, a longer growing season, hopefully. Um, so if I can get a crop of sorghum in there before I plant the winter wheat again, we'll do that. Um, I am running out of room on the urban homestead. We, we still have a little bit of room, uh, but we're definitely, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm in to pick and choose things. Um, this year, I'm, I'm not focusing as much on new projects. I've talked a lot about wanting to get fish and do those things. So that is one of the fish I may still do. I'm considering, um, I'm having to balance between not taking on new projects, just finishing up my projects here and focusing on getting on land and doing some things now that I believe could be needed. Um, and so I'm, I'm kind of trying to balance that in a weird place. We got someone new in here, it looks like. Uh, Yud P, welcome. Good to see you. Uh, thank you for joining. Where's a good place to get sorghum seeds? So I actually bought my sorghum seeds. I like to get, um, we get seeds from all over the place. Um, I do like to get mine from uh, smaller growers, uh, in, like in my gardener or different ones like that. I believe I got my sorghum seed from, American Homestead from Zach, from his Etsy shop. So that's where it came from. Matt, are you going to do the Three Sisters Method? I have tried it. I want to do it. The thing with the Three Sisters Method is you need a little bit more room to do it because you really need to hill it and space it out. Um, once again, I'm, I'm kind of running low on room, so I, I think I'm going to do it in one area and just do one three sisters thing and I'll explain in a minute but um, just so I can learn uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it as a viable really growing method here with because of room but three sister method if you guys aren't familiar with is um, growing three different plants that are work in a symbiotic relationship kind of and so what you do is you grow corn so you're going to do a hill and you're going to put a corn seed in there and you're going to grow a corn stalk and when it's so high you plant uh, or, you know, however high you plant beans around it. 
And those beans are going to grow up. They're going to add nitrogen in the soil that that corn needs to grow. They're also going to use the corn as a trellis or a stalk to grow up it. Then once you get those growing, you or in that time frame, you grow a squash along the bottom. And so the big squash leaves are going to help retain moisture in the soil. They're going to spread out across the bottom and keep the soil from deteriorating. And so that's the Three Sisters method. Um, it does take a little bit more room. It is something that is I, I really want to do. Uh, it's getting cold out here. Sorry, you're going to see me shaking. But um, this nut is insulated in here, as I'd hope. I, I, the quail don't need a lot of insulation at all. They can be good up to, I think, negative 20. Um, but I want to insulate it in the quail shack because I do want to incubate and brood in here as well. Let's see. Verna saying corn, beans, and squash. Yep. A great method. Um, I have a spot I think I might try it in. Boil more water, warm up. Yeah, I could turn the stove on. I have a little Mr. Heater I could bring out here too, but I'm just being, it's not cold. I really have no place to complain here in New Mexico. Have you looked into the square foot planting? I have, yes. I believe that's where you do grid method. Um, and so we might do some of that this year. With all these different methods and things I want to try. Um, and again, I'm balancing. So I don't know how long we're going to be here on the urban homestead. I, I love it here. Uh, but it is, I do want to get out of the city and somewhere where I have water as a more sustainable source. Right now I, I have rain catchment, but um, we really do largely rely on water. So I want to get on some land. I don't know when we're going to move. We are leaving that up to God. So right now we're working on a couple things that need to be worked on to get to that point. Um, and we're really just waiting for when the door window opens to jump. Right now the plan is to be good stewards of, of the things we have here, the animals and land we have here, to learn to use them to feed and sustain our family as well to help others that need it. Um, to use some of it as some income as well, or barter, which I would I would prefer to do, but it's hard to find people that will do that with you. Um, and then just really to learn those skills. And so we're just trying to be good towards of that for now until time comes. And so that could be really soon, or it could be a few years, I do not know. So when I go as to what I'm going to build and I'm looking at the projects, I'm weighing on what I could take with me, how much of an investment do I want to do now, so as to have those things um, now versus put away for later. So I'm kind of in this weird state of a sense of urgency, but also a sense of needing to kind of save and do some things. Is it great when you're on limited space? Yeah. No, it is. I uh, actually really like it. Um, we've kind of tried to do that. Last, so last year, we actually grew too much of things we didn't eat enough of like the kale, the lettuce, the chard, great to grow, good to have. You don't need a ton of it, and you can't really preserve it. So we're going to use that, that space for things more so that we can preserve and stuff a little bit better. Um, yeah, that's a good idea, Verna. I don't think we've used that in our plan yet. I do still have a good, I would say, 20 foot by, I don't know, 50, 60 foot spot um, on the other side of my yard that I'm going to prep. I have another about the same foot wide um, uh, another part of my yard that I'm going to plan on doing. I'm opening up our Sukkot or gazebo uh, this year to growing and trellising beans and tomatoes up it. Behind it, we're going to ex ex anyways, uh, we're going to expand our potato bed. I have a lot of neighborhood stuff behind me here. Commercial stuff, so probably hear me. It's a good talk tonight, good fellowship. I do enjoy seeing everyone at my weekly one. So as far as uh, Farmer Casey, he has some things he wants to share. And normally we do a Sunday morning garden chat with him or uh, cooking as we've been doing lately. Um, that one I don't keep on the same schedule like I do this. Uh, of course, it's with my son, and it's something he wants to do. 
Um, but it's not something I'll ever push him to do or we're going to keep it on a schedule like that. That's just going to be more so on how he's doing and how he's feeling. So I think that is important. I have tried Aramath. We have a lot. It is a beautiful plant. I love Aramath. And this year I was a horrible steward of seed saving. Uh, I did get a lot saved, but I also spread a lot all over the yard. So I am fully expecting my compost area to have uh, bright red air mass all over it this year. <laughs> I actually didn't use it for anything, though. I just grew it. So I need to use it more. Oh, and there we go. Look, Yen P, thank you very much. Air mass, what is it good for? Quell feet. Oh, he's asking. Same questions I am. Cool. Oh, I feel like I'm always losing my voice. So Verna got a really neat microphone, um, and it, her her stream sounded really good uh, this morning. Maybe it's I'm stressing my my voice. Maybe someday I need to look into that. Normally I have my little clip-on mic, uh, but with using StreamYard, it doesn't want to work. So I'm just yelling at my phone. All right. Six people in here. I've been on almost an hour now. I do have a cleaning and things to get to that I didn't do earlier today as uh, we were celebrating Shabbat. So now it's time to do the dishes. I hope everyone's having a good week. I hope everyone's feeling good. I hope uh, you're doing the things and getting yourselves ready and, and just every day living with purpose, going about everything you do with purpose. Um, Vern is answering. Cool. Yes, Yud. Okay. Harvest as soon as it starts to dry before the birds do. Hang it to dry. It's also a good wheat substitute. I did not know that. You can mill and bake it. I had all this air map last year and did not know that. That is great info. Thank you, Vernon. You are full of good info. And great question. Thank you, Yud. So, yeah, but you guys do the thing. Stay strong. I am going to go ahead and uh, hop off for tonight, um, but I hope to see you guys that have streams and your own streams this week. I might be on in the morning with my son, I'm not sure, um, but I do plan on releasing a couple videos. If anyone is interested in seeing anything in particular I'm doing here or has any questions, as always, feel free to leave those in the comments, and we'll try and get to that. It's one of the ancient grains as well. Okay, I didn't know that. I learned something every week. You guys rock. Thank you, CDB, as always, for moderating. Uh, I do appreciate you so very much. And I don't know if Willie's still here from Carolina, but thank you for moderating as well. Um, thank you for the stream. Hey, you rock. Thank you for being here, uh, Yad P. Uh, everyone have a blessed night. Do the things. Stay strong. We'll see you next time.